Okay, folks, here we are at uh, part two of this job of breaking down this uh, shank. Well, this is the shank and the shoulder. So what we're going to do is start separating the muscle groups. And uh, basically, we're going to start separating this from the bone. This is like, a, I guess, on a human, you would call it a clavicle bone right here. So what we want to do, after we got all the, the trimming and stuff done on it, or the majority of the trimming done, got all the, the surface uh, fat and surface skin that was kind of dried out and separated that. And, and that's not always, like I said, so you got, you know, your fat that's trimmed off. Uh, put that aside. And then for the, the doggy snack treats uh, right here, we can dry those out a bit more and the dog just, just loves them. So um, what we want to do is start looking for muscles groups. So like this one right here, we're just going to start separating them. And knife choice is, is always uh, good. Um, this one, a nice thin little knife, works better for getting in those muscle groups. And what you're doing with, with this right here is just basically taking off the, you know, the rounded dull edge. So um, just keep your knife good and sharp. And oh, and the other thing too, what I like to do because my hands are getting digging in there is you can get these uh, nice washable um, Kevlar gloves. They have those iron ones too, but um, these are a bit cheaper and uh, actually work a little bit better. Um, I, I kind of like them. Um, what would be good, ideal uh, in this to keep your hands out of the mix as much and trying to separate it is uh, a meat hook. Fortunately, I used it doing some other butchering work where uh, I didn't bring it. So I don't have my, my meat hook. So if you, if you do have a meat hook, kind of helps out in separating the, the meat muscle groups. So if you can, basically you want to just kind of work right in where you're separating out from where those muscles attach. And hopefully I'm not in the way. I don't have a, a camera person to, uh, to help out here. I'm doing it by myself. And I had to make up a jerry-rigged little tripod there off of my chair. And uh, I used uh, duct tape. <laughs> duct taped it on there. So it's a real... Jerry rigged little little setup got going there. So the kind of the name of the game is with this is just separating out these these little muscle groups. If you can, you know, it's not don't have to be perfect about it. I'll call that one good. And uh, then from, you get these pieces here, so we'll further process those up. So as it is right now, we just want to start separating out the, the muscle groups on it. And start going from there. So this is a, a little knee kind of a deal here. So, um, the other thing is you'll have like these real cartilage pieces here and don't throw those away because they make really good soup and you'll get some uh, tendon sinew material too. That is very good for soup stock um, and, you know, for... Uh, yourself say if you've got um, muscle joint problems 
then uh, it's always good to take that. That's like, you know, what they make Knox gelatin out of? It's like this, this type of material right here. It's, um, my grandfather used to call it dead man's bluff. And they, they'd always give you gelatin in the hospital. So it's really, really good for you. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to separate that, that joint right there and just following it, following it around. And this is where these little flay knives, and they're pretty cheap. I think I got those for 12 bucks at sport, sporting goods store, you know, used for like flaying your fish out, but it'll get in there pretty good and around these, these joints. So you can separate the meat pretty good, get it off the bone. Now, um, one of the things that I learned was I want to leave some meat on the bone <laughs> for making the bone soup. Um, so don't don't worry about being overly. If you want, if you're gonna make bone soup. Is really good, pretty too, you know. Like, uh, uh, I to quote the uh, how was his name, uh, Alex Jones, who used to have the uh, bone broth soup, you know, and he would talk about how people, you know, needed it for their stamina and stuff. And that's true, Chinese people uh, eat a lot of bone soup, and uh, they don't tend to have the, the joint problems that. Um, a lot of uh, Americans have, and probably because we just don't eat a lot of bone soup. So, if you uh, take like this cartilage material, you know, on in your bone soup, and you leave that on there, uh, it will uh, be very healthy. So you don't really want to worry a whole lot, you know, you just kind of have to get in there and try it. Um, you know, if you're worrying like, oh, yeah, you got to follow the... A muscle, well, yeah, you want to kind of follow it out, true, but um, don't want to spend a whole lot of time. Like I said, you want to, to leave some, some meat on the bone. Don't want to get it all off. So right now, what I am doing is just chunking it up. Getting the, the main, main pieces. And you're gonna still have some more, more trim, trim pieces um, coming out. So like this one, perfect. Dog turkey treats. Here's another one. You know my my dog, even even my old dog, they just love these. You know, chew on it. You could, you know, just like uh, people jerky, you could salt them up if you want. Um, I, what I do is just like like it is, not 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 extra salt. I just put them in the food dehydrator and uh, dry them out and um, ready as little treats. Uh, 
right. So there's first chunk of meat right there. All right. So we put that aside. And what we have here is a, is a meat slicer. You can set the adjustment on how thick of uh, steaks you want to cut out of it. And, I'm, you know, that's kind of nice for the uniformity. They have some that are like a, a crank um, meat slicer. This one actually has a little motor on it, so um, makes it pretty convenient. So now you kind of get a picture of how that, that joint starting to shape up through that bone right there. So what I'm going to have to do is get into that knuckle right there and work around that knuckle and then around that backside and separate the shank. And then, like I was saying earlier, I'm going to cut the shank up. So there's going to be this whole bone in it right here. And then I'm going to have another section here. And then this whole section from here down to there will just be like a bone soup. And then you'll get bone out of that whole shank too. But with that shank, usually what they'll do is like bake it in the oven. Um, and as one piece right there. And then serve it up and you just carve it off the bone. So the other thing, this, you know, butchering is uh, some heavy work. So when you're talking about, you know, 45, 50 pound chunk of beef or more that you're, you're lugging around, you got to keep that in mind, protect your back. My, my back is terrible. Um, so I, We'll use every possible aid and assistance I can to protect my back. As well as even just while I'm doing it, if I start uh, feeling my back going out and I need to take a break. That's the nice thing about being retired. You don't have to push yourself. Had a job for the man. So, say when we got pieces like this, you're just you're gonna cut off that that surface meat there. Once again, goes in the scrap bin for the doggies. Uh, if you don't have dogs, maybe you got friends or neighbors. So when you get pieces like this and it has some fat on it, um, you might want to make a separate bag, a pile or bucket or whatever it's going to be for uh, making hamburger meat. So when you do that, you want to make sure that you cut it up and it's ready to go. You know, about that size pieces to stuff down the little chute in your, your meat grinder. The other thing, um, say when you, say if you, you didn't want that, you know, that's a pretty lean piece of meat, got a little bit of fat on it. Um, if 
you didn't want it for your meat grinder and you get these nice little pieces and you say, oh, well, you know, I don't want that, you know, maybe shish kebab meat. So then you just get another bag out and they say shish kebab meat. So as you're going through this process, you just kind of um, categorize, like as you can see here, I got my section for jerky meat, labeled it jerky meat. Shish kebab. Shish kebab, this one. Hamburger. Okay. So, my shish kebab meat. Put it in here. So, if it's not cut, yeah, for shish kebab meat, but that's okay. I can always cut it up later um, into the little squares for the shish kebab meat. This one, yeah, we'll go for shish kebab meat too. Okay. Now, and you know, remember what I was saying about the, the bone? If it has a little bit of meat on it, it's okay. See, when we get done with this bone here and I separate from that knuckle, if it's got some meat on it, it's good. And then I'll cut that bone right there into two pieces. So you'll have a bone here and a bone here. And then the marrow will be exposed in the middle. Therefore, when you make your soup, that marrow is coming out of that bone. And uh, I'll tell you a story about um, my visit to China one time. I went quite a few times to China, um, many times actually. But first time I went to China, um, I was meeting, which wasn't my wife at that time, I was meeting my, my to-be wife's um, family. And we went to this, this restaurant, and it was a hot pot restaurant. So I don't know if you... You know what a hot pot restaurant is? It's um, it's a restaurant. You go in and they have in the middle of the table, they have these hot pots. So what I'm doing here is right there we have the, no, no, actually we don't. It's over this way a little bit there. The clavicle. Or scapula maybe. Anyways, getting back to the restaurant. We're in this restaurant. It's a very steamy place because you have all these hot pots in there that are um, cooking away, and the, they're in the center of the the people's table. So the um, waitress will come over. She give you this this piece of paper, and you order all these different things, and she pulls the part of the table um, where the exposes this burner that a big um, lock fits down in it and starts boiling away. And then uh, you order whatever type of stuff you want to stick in that hot pot. Okay, well, um, they, they ordered these bones, you know, that goes in it. And so that's boiling away in this, this hot pot in the restaurant. And, you know, I'm the, I'm the white guy, I didn't speak any Chinese. And, um, not quite understanding what all they're putting in it. You know, some of it looked pretty strange. I had no idea what the stuff was they're putting in this hot pot. They're just, you know, adding it in. And while you're, you're eating it, you're adding it. And there's like real thin sliced meat. So like say this thing here, you can set it for really thin. You can cut these really thin pieces of meat that you stick in your in your hot pot anyway so in the hot pot there's some some big bones and you know like these these cow bones big knuckles and stuff so my niece my well she, yeah, it's my niece my my wife's brother's daughter 
she's uh, just a young girl at the time, you know, just um, you know, long before she was ever married. I don't remember how old she was, just really young. Maybe 12, 10, 12 years old. Anyways, I thought it was the strangest thing that after we get done uh, cooking everything and pretty much all that's left is that bone in there. And I thought, okay, well, that bone was just in there for the flavor, you know. She takes the bone out, asks for a straw, and she's sucking the marrow out of the bone. And oh boy, I thought that was just really crazy. But um, being the trooper like myself and not wanting to be shown up by a little girl, I had to try it myself. And actually, it was pretty good. Very, very nutritious for you too. So, um, I bet it looked pretty funny for the, the Chinese people too to see some former white guy. And back then, you know, even in Shanghai there, um, you didn't see too many foreigners at that time in, in China. And people would stop me on the street and want to take pictures with me, you know, because it's just, you know, something they don't normally see. And uh, more so in um, other parts of, of China, they would take pictures with me, kind of like, felt like a movie star. Because Shanghai is, you know, it's pretty much always been a real metropolitan uh, city that they get people that come from all over the world. So they've probably seen a lot more of them, but you get, you know, just outside of Shanghai, you know, an hour or so away, like Suzhou, Hanzhou, places like that. Beautiful places, you know, and you know people would often stop me and ask my wife if they could take a picture with me, and of course she would get jealous because she'd want to be in the picture too. And they say, "Oh no, no, we just want a picture of him." <laughs> uh, that was my experience of. Being a film like a movie star. Anyways. So here's a good example of some hamburger meat there. And your hamburger meat, don't worry about the uh, the sinew in it because that sinew. When it gets cooked in your hamburger meat, it's just like, like glue. It helps glue your burger together. Okay, so, uh, it's a little too much meat on the bone. I don't want to be too stingy. Also, too, you're going to lose, well, not lose, but just kind of, when you cut it with a sawzall, it gets all that bone in it. Okay, so, I did a video before. You ever wonder how long it, it takes to cut through a bone? <laughs> well, here you go. So, I'm going to cut right through there. So, this big knuckle here. That'll make a good bone soup right there. And then you'll get another one on, on that side. There you go. Um, one, one thing with the Sawzall. Oh, that smells is uh, you want to make sure you get rid of the 
a paint on it. I sanded most all that paint off, but still a little bit on there. You can see the, the yellow kind of rubbed off on it. But yeah, if you take, um, if you get a brand new Sawzall blade and um, to get that off, you take a piece of sandpaper or some um, steel wool and make sure you wear some glove when you do it. Leather, leather glove, gloves preferably. Then just turn it over backwards and then rub all that paint off that saw blade. So there you go. That's a perfect bone to put in your soup stock or soup to make a, you know, a bone stock for it. So we will put that in a, another zip line right here. Now see what, when I uh, process this other meat and I start putting it away, um, those like as little steaks, I'm going to individually um, wrap those with the butcher paper. So I'll use two, two types of paper. I'll use the, the main, um, it's kind of a colored paper. Uh, and then the butcher paper is more kind of a uh, more dense paper. So you're going to double wrap it that way. You know, it doesn't bleed through and um, you don't get frost bit in your freezer. The other thing a lot of people do, which I have as well, and I'll probably do with some of my meat, is uh, put it in these vacuum seal bags individually. Or like say, you know, put two steaks or, you know, for my wife and I, then uh, two steaks in it so it's ready to go. Vacuum sealed in there and that's ready to go. Okay, so that one ready to go in the, the freezer and on to the shank so this is going to be the tough part here is getting that that bone out of there so it's the same same kind of scenario you're going to find where that bone um, and just follow it along to dig it out so just kind of like you do with the muscle groups. So for this is a little easy because you can feel where it's solid. I don't know if you can see, we have a lot of uh, watchers over here. Cal's coming over to watch me process one of their kinfolk here. Now, once you get into that knuckle, you're gonna notice 
there's this really slimy stuff and it's going to get all over your fingers and just super, super slip, slippery. That's synovial fluid. And it's like a really good lubricant. Um, I've heard people having uh, success with uh, making like a rub actually out of it and rubbing it into their own joints and if they have skin problems on their elbow like eczema uh, even for that Basically what I'm doing is just opening it up, finding the tendons, and then separating or cutting those tendons to separate that, that joint out of there. So first you just kind of got to get the meat away from it, and then once you expose that, then you'll, you'll kind of find the tendons and how it locks in there. And that's, that's pretty much it to get that bone joint separated and there it is so there's another one to make a bone soup stock not too much meat on that one I might just put it with this other one that I, when my wife and I have soup we can both suck the marrow out of it now honestly I, I haven't done that since that time in China but, um, Definitely, a, it was something to be rememberable, seeing this little girl, yeah, see that? Anyway, seeing a little girl taking a straw and sucking the marrow out of a joint. Not something I've ever seen in America. So, that was a, a cultural, uh, opener for me now like I said so this this shank I'm going to cut it basically so that way it can be um, handled in a one cooked meal you know say you got guests come over and um, you stick a shank in the oven and cook it. This one here from that, that section where I cut it down um, will be another uh, deal for making the soup. So I think we'll out there. We'll get the bone saw out again. So this is uh, called a reciprocating saw. Um, people call it a saw saw because it saws all. Um, very handy for doing this kind of work. Not everybody's going to have one. They have some uh, different. This one's a Ryobi. It's the high high powered one. HP. Um, so, I mean, the price of it, you can, you know, buy the whole, like, drill and sawzall of the cheaper one. But this one, because it's got the brushless motor, it's a little more high price. And it doesn't even come with a battery. You have to buy that separate. So I think it was, like, 139 bucks. Anyways, so, uh, it is a definite tool of the trade for all kinds of stuff. I have another sawzall, but I wanted one that was just specifically just for meat cutting, so it's not, you know, bringing in contamination. All right, so, 
There's another one. See, that would make a, a fine bone soup. You got all this cartilage on there. And, uh, you know, it just, it turns when, when it's uh, boiled in like a uh, pressure pot. It just turns gelatinous and uh, makes a really good soup stock. Yeah, probably don't want all the foam stuff on it. But... Okay, so I'll put that one in a separate bag. Soup stock. Oh, and this one here, I'm going to set it aside for now because that one, like the other meat, it's going to be packaged up. Um, and labeled with the butcher paper. That's <laughs> speaking of another cultural di difference with uh, the Chinese um, and Americans. Um, when we go to a restaurant and <clears throat> we order, say, chicken uh, for a meal, so even in San Francisco, because you know, a lot of the uh, people in China, you know, come straight over from China and have the same carry on the same culture, but. Uh, for us, it's kind of a shocker and you you order a, a dish and in a restaurant and You get bone fragments in your your chicken um, You know for Americans they'd be calling and complaining and wanting their money back um, but that's pretty normal for the, the Chinese to uh, they use a, a, a down there and Probably using it anyways. Use a meat cleaver, and you get all these in their chicken, these little shards of bone. So you have to really watch it when you you're eating because you can get one of those shards just lodged right in me in your gum or somewhere in the roof of your mouth. So that's. Uh, Kind of a difference there. I'll tell you another story about uh, China. So you, you go to a restaurant and a lot of the food they, that you get is fresh. You know, people want want their, their food nice and fresh. So um, I was in this restaurant in Beijing it was, uh, I don't even say like a little hole in a wall place, but kind of a, you know, little restaurant. And, you know, you can tell it, you wouldn't get uh, food poisoning from it because, the, you know, the line there just to get in it and, and to eat and to get a table and so on and so forth, they move a lot of food. So... Anyways, the what I'm doing here is I'm separating this meat from that that's I guess you would call it a scapula.
and there's going to be like a, a little fin in there too so it's when you're separating it out keep that in mind anyway so i go in this restaurant with my wife and we order some fish and I asked the guy, well, I did, my wife did for me, asked the guy if it was fresh. You know, I want to know if it was fresh fish. So he, to prove it, and I can see him in the back from where I was sitting, they were just hacking stuff in, on this like big round, you know, tree stump in the in the kitchen that's all dished out and you know from just years of just butchering stuff and hacking meat on it with a cleaver well um the guy brings the fish out throws it on the floor in the restaurant and it's flopping around on the floor just to prove that it's not dead already <laughs> i was like oh wow and then so he takes that fish it was just flopping on the floor back over and I can see the guy stick it on that chopping block and then whack and start chopping it up. So, oh boy, that was, a, that was another cultural awakening for me on the, the differences from America to China. So there's that little ridge from that, that scapula bone. So I'm going to just follow that one out. So I'll point out something you might not know, and you probably do know, being that this this meat is grass-fed, um, it was fed primarily most of its life on um, alfalfa. So no, I did you know a lot of uh, different farmers, you know, they'll finish the the animal off with uh, grain being corn. And what that does is that creates a higher fat content. So you'll, you'll actually get more weight on your, your, your beef. And the other thing is you'll get more marbling. But there's a distinct difference in the one, the taste, as well as, um, I can't really say so much that it, this beef has more of a gamey taste, um, being that it's raised on the grass, but it depends where your, your game comes from because I've had some deer that, you know, like up in California's D zone that are just eating a lot of the scrubbery up there, you know, from any kind of scrub bush plant. And it's that real, like, sticks to the roof of your mouth. Uh, no, it doesn't. When I say game, it doesn't. Not like that kind of gamey. Um, it's just a different fl different flavor to the meat. Um, once you eat it and you get used to it, you probably will never go back to uh, grain-fed beef. Now, if you look at at the the meat here, separate out that one. So if you look at the, the meat right there, see that there's not a whole lot of marbling. A little bit, but not a whole lot. You'll get a lot more of that fat marbling on beef that is grain fed. Um, so it's just, it's much leaner meat in this grass fed uh, meat. 
Now on, on this piece up here, see with all that sinew, um, that is uh, actually perfect. I wouldn't worry about that, that sinew right there because it's got the fat and the sinew in it. It will make uh, really good hamburger meat. So um, just put it in your in the hamburger pile. Okay, so that one, I'll just cut off this section down here when my knife's getting dull. Time to go for the, no, the curry is a little dull too. Okay, so there's a nice chunk of meat that we'll slice up. This one here, um, we still got some trimming to do on this one. What I'll probably end up doing with this piece here, because um, all that has to be trimmed off, is uh, eh, to think about that one. See that those those lines going in it's not going to be that great it's probably just going to be hamburger meat but first i need to trim off that part so as you can see where the meat hung you're going to lose you know anywhere from half inch to a quarter inch of meat um, because it's just it tried see there's another little that ridge bone right there so if I follow the ridge bone now on the other side and the other thing too you know like say this this bone here um, people will use this bone right here too for making soup so you don't have to clean it off too much you know, leave some meat on the bone, as the old saying goes. And uh, say if you were selling it, um, you know, with, with the, the bone meat like that, um, people are making the soups out of it. You know, they'll 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 buy that too. You know the. The Chinese um, people love it for making the soup. And I was surprised, even my mom, when I told her about it, she says, oh yeah, I do that all the time. So she makes soup too. I just don't remember a whole lot of bone soup when I was a kid. I remember they would buy the bone and feed it to the dogs. But what the Chinese will do, they'll make the bone soup and then afterwards feed the, the bone to the dog. So for those of you that don't know, we talk a lot about Chinese culture. Um, I married into the, the Chinese culture because my wife is Chinese. She's originally from China been here for many years. She was here, I think, 10 years when I married her already. Um, so I didn't didn't actually go over to China and meet her. I, um, we fell in love. Um, we're both working together um, in the hospital, or actually it was a clinic. I think it, well, I was working both clinic and hospital, but she was mainly at the, the clinic. So that is um, the story about my 
on wave. So like all this on the bone, I'll leave that under. But now this piece is too big to fit in a pot. So what I'm gonna do is chop that up probably in a couple couple pieces. So back at the sawzall again. should fit in a pot, right? This one might be a little big, so we'll split that. Okay. So, as you can see, that sawzall is quite a handy tool for doing butchering work. Um, if you had a... Um, you know, professional butcher shop, well, you know, then you can afford to have a, a bandsaw and probably don't have as much issue with all the little stuff here. But boy, I tell you, um, bandsaws are quite dangerous. Back when uh, I was in shop class in high school, I was distracted by this girl in the shop class and sliced right through my thumb went right through the nail of my thumb all the way down to the bone well there's a cow loose on the road remember what i was telling you about the cows out and look it's trying to get scared oh climb right over the fence <laughs> oh boy that's uh that's a bad cow okay so here we go we got Three more bones for bone soup. There's some, uh, some good stuff for Mr. Wolf, Dingo. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I don't know if you know you guys probably don't need more information on you know once like you got these bigger pieces of meat here, uh, cutting them down is pretty self-explanatory. The main thing was just breaking down that that leg, and it gets even bigger. That was a front leg, so when you get the back leg up here, you're talking now you're moving around. 150 200 pound hunk of meat so um that one was probably only about 50 pounds so it's not not that big of a deal um as far as uh like these other chunks of meat um I, i'm by no means selling this product i haven't even tried it out yet this was something my my wife uh ordered and got but you can stick some meat in here it has different slicers in it so if you know like those little round cuts of meat you can slice off um, i like my my good old-fashioned uh, uh, meat cutter simple self-explanatory you put the hunk of meat in there you can dial it into the size of meat that you want to slice off and you just keep pushing this forward as your meat's going and you're 
Just cutting it. Real simple. Um, you can use um, a knife, you know, or like this even. Um, it, it's just a little tough. Um, you know, the flatter the blade, you know, and you're holding that meat to get your, you know, when you cut it, you want to just one solid cut all the way through it as you're cutting it. And try, you know, that way you're holding it firm as possible so you get a nice consistent steak cut off of it. All right, well, um, I think that's about a wrap uh, for for this and appreciate your time. I know this video is, uh, is a long, long video, um, but hopefully it was informative and you enjoyed it. Um, if you're new to my channel, please uh, take the time and like, comment, subscribe. If you've been here for uh, and you've been subscribing, uh, same thing. Um, like it and uh, comment. Love to hear from you. I read all my comments and try to respond back to them and um, answer any questions. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.